Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, in Ahmadu and Astain, who and Astaw of Firu and Nukminu Behi, when a Tawakalu Ali, where I owe the Billahim in Shuruli and Fusina, women say Yati Amalina, my Yadi Hilahu Fala Mudilla, where my Yudlilhu Fala Hadiella, where Shadu Allah Ilaha in the Law, who had the Hula Sharikala, where Shadu and the Muhammad and Abdu who were a Sulu, Arsala who Bashiro and Nadira, by Nayade Saa. وأرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون من يدي الله ورسوله فقد رشد واهتدى ومن يعسهما فإنه قد غوى وإنه لا يضر إلا نفسه ولا يضر الله شيء إن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن خير الأمور يوازمها وشر الأمور مهدساتها كل مهدسة بدعة وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار يوم بعد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في محكم القرآن الكريم في سورة البقرة ولن نبلغنكم بشيء من الخوف والجوع والنقص من الأموال والأنفس والثمرات وبشر الصابرين الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إن لله وإن إليه راجعون أولئك عليهم صلوات من ربهم ورحمة وأولئك هم المحتدون صدق الله العلي العظيم. My dear brothers and sisters, we stand reminded by the ayah which we are so familiar with. We recite it often. But let us be reminded where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that we shall try you with something of fear and hunger and loss of wealth and lives and crops. But give glad tidings to the steadfast who say when a misfortune strikes them, lo, we are Allah's and unto him we are returning. Such are they on whom are blessings from the Lord and mercy. Such are the rightly guided. It has been distressing to note the terrorist attacks on the New Zealand mosques, the Al Noor, the Linwood Masajid. Sickening to see the carnage which killed 50 and injured. Many, many. It was horrifying to see this based on an evil manifesto of white supremacy, hatred against migrants, colored people, Muslims. Of 
course, we have been shocked and we have been outraged and we have condemned these evil attacks of terrorism based on the evil and hateful ideology of Islamophobia and right-wing extremism and nationalism which incites such hatred, such deathly violence. My dear brothers and sisters, we all have prayed and we continue to offer our du'as for the brothers and sisters who were martyred as they gathered for Juma Salah with their families. In the houses of Allah, the Bayt Allah, we pray for their maghfirah and their jannah as shuhada. We pray for shifa for those injured and sabr and ajr for the families who have all been impacted there and around the world. Today, brothers and sisters, what I wanted to do was remind all of us about a few essential elements of confronting these tragedies, particularly the terrorism that we have seen based on white supremacy, because it has to be called out as such. In the United States too, we have seen an epidemic of racist, hateful attacks on Muslims and mosques across the country, including killings. Our mosques in the area have been threatened. Other mosques have been subject to attacks and arson. Yet these are times when we are asked to go back with full faith, with full tawakkul in the wise and truthful plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the recognition that his plan is to some degree unfathomable, to a large degree not understandable, yet eventually we understand it is for the best. And the key is for me and all of us to recognize that we all have a role to play in these difficult times. Each one of us has a role to play. And we must become cognizant of what that role is. Each one has a different role. There are similarities, but we have been given different capabilities, different positions in life. And this is a call for us to step up and play that role. First of all, we will all be vigilant, of course. We will be careful. We'll do our best to be protective of ourselves and those around us. And we will do so, brothers and sisters, it needs a reminder, we will do so without any embarrassment, without any embarrassment or feeling of weakness. Yes, we have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He gives us the protection and what His will is, will happen. But it is also our duty to be wise and mature in looking out for areas of concern and protecting ourselves, our families, our places of worship, our places of social gathering. And we will also use these difficult times to bond better, brothers and sisters, inshallah, amongst ourselves, amongst our communities, amongst our leadership, amongst our families, our friends. This is a time for us to reaffirm our brotherhood, our communal family, and the strength that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with in that togetherness that we all share. Let us also be clear, brothers and sisters, that what has happened in Christchurch, that terrorism, cannot be dismissed as the act of one deranged individual. This was not just an attack against Muslims, it was not just against migrants, this was unbridled terrorism by white supremacists against the global community of peaceful citizens. We are not dealing with a handful of loners, or psychopaths, but a global, diffuse movement with a core ideology of hate and violence and destruction. So we have this movement which is supported out of so many places like the US, the Europe, European area, with a crazed world view that the white, white Christian population is threatened by brown, black, colored migrants, others, Muslims. 
Jews. And this is symbolized by the neo-Nazis of orders of, of Europe, the notorious KKK in, in our part of the world. And this is drawing strength and support from political demagogues and leadership in the highest levels. So we must be clear in considering these terrorists as evil killers and not get into probing the psychology of each killer, their mental state, instead recognizing that this is a global phenomenon that must be targeted and fought to extinction. I say this because we need to be comfortable in taking on this position as we deal with others in society. So we must do the same for white supremacism, which is bringing violence, hatred, killing, and bloodshed all over the world as we did for all the other terrorist movements. And regarding this understanding, brothers and sisters, that all of those linked to this movement may not be themselves involved in violence, the position we need to be understanding and taking is that we must target all hate preachers based on advancing and legitimizing extremist ideas. We've heard for so many years about the radicalization of so-called radicalization of young men and women who then took to violence. This logic must apply to the extreme right, white supremacist terrorism that we are seeing so that they are hate preachers, the right-wing pundits, the populist politicians in the US and Europe, they are held accountable for espousing, supporting these ideologies. So that is an important element that I wanted to convey for all of us brothers and sisters. And then I want to bring us to the positive aspects. There are always positive aspects based upon the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of us have experienced, I am sure, to the last person, the resounding support that we have seen from members outside our Muslim communities. Starting with the Thursday night when this terrorism act occurred, so many of us, I know I was inundated with calls, messenger, messages. The Friday after the attacks, so many of us attended a number of community vigils. I had the privilege of doing the Juma Khutbah at the Wheaton Islamic Center. And it was so reassuring to see neighbors from around the communities all over the masjid grounds interested in the security of the people who were going into the mosque. Pastor David from the local church there, he wanted to stand outside and welcome each person in. After the Juma Salah was done, we had a Salatul Janaza, and right after that we asked the pastor to come and speak for a few minutes, and he was literally in tears. As he said, I was welcomed by so many saying, my brother. And that was a reminder, brothers and sisters. Remember, when this crazed evil terrorist went into the Al-Nur Masjid and knocked, the person who opened it up and was the first one who was killed and became martyred, he greeted him with our phrase. He greeted that evil killer with my brother before the spray of bullets took his life. That is the essence of our faith that I want to stay reminded of, brothers and sisters. We have seen so many people, our friends from other faiths, who have shown up at these vigils, offered their du'as, their, according to them, their prayers of support openly and from their heart, and show support for, for our community. And then let us be reminded once again how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan is the best. It works beyond the pale of our understanding. And right after the brutal Christchurch terrorism, we saw what? Thousands gathering for Friday prayers outside the mosques at Hagley and around New Zealand. Nationwide, we were struck by the two minutes silence which was held in honor of the Muslim victims. The Adhan was broadcast across the country on radio and television. Within six days, under the remarkable leadership of their Prime Minister uh, Ardern, the assault rifles and semi-automatics 
ban came into place. And this remarkable prime minister at a national ceremony proclaimed the words of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam beginning with the offering of Durood in Arabic and then she recited the believers in their mutual kindness, compassion and sympathy are just like one body. When any part of the body suffers, the whole body feels pain. The tr tradition which we are so familiar with and then she added, New Zealand mourns with you. And she said, they are us referring to the killed Muslims and to the terrorists saying, you may have chosen us, but we utterly reject and condemn you. Memorials for Muslims were held in every major city there. Christchurch, Auckland, Wellington, Dunedin, Hamilton. Kiwis skipped school to join Muslims. Maori songs of inspiration were sung. Hundreds of thousands shouted out loud, Kia kaha in Maori, stay strong, asking us to stay strong with their support. And remember when the US president asked how he could help, the prime minister said, give sympathy and love for all Muslim communities. So brothers and sisters, even yesterday, there was another remarkable memorial service where the prime minister reminded all of the citizens, including the Muslim citizens, that we each hold the power in our words, in our actions, in our daily acts of kindness. Let that be the legacy of the 15th of March. The mayor of Christchurch reminded all present of the responsibility to question themselves about their own views and the comfort we give to people who might harbor racist or hateful views. What is heartwarming, and that is my point of quoting all of this language, brothers and sisters, is to see the Muslims of New Zealand, especially those who lost family, who were there, who were injured, respond with the Islamic perspectives of faith, of humility, of magnanimity, and of thanks. The Muslim Council of Canterbury President Shagaf Khan said, deeply saddened by the event, but we are humbled by the outpouring of grief that followed. And he thanked everybody there, including the international dignitary, saying that you did not leave us alone in our sadness, that New Zealand responded in a way that none of us will ever forget, that you let the world know who we really are. Farid Muhammad, a survivor of the Al-Nur Masjid attack, thanked the International Memorial Gathering, saying, I would like to honor you for your presence today. I want to thank New Zealanders for coming together, for showing the world that New Zealand is a peaceful country. Yusuf Islam, who was present there, said, it is only when good people stay sitting that evil rises. We have seen the opposite in this country. And perhaps the best expression, brothers and sisters, of Muslim faith and generosity was shown by Imam Jamal Fawda in his Juma Qutbah last week. So I'm taking the unusual step of going to recite language from his sermon because I was inspired that day listening to his sermon. It is important for us to keep this in mind as we go out to the world, shaken, hurt, in pain by the massacre, but yet putting on and showing the best values of Islam, that of magnanimity, that of caring, that of thankfulness, that of humility, despite all the difficulties that come our way. He said, brothers and sisters in Islam, brothers and sisters in humanity, brothers and sisters in New Zealand, last Friday I stood in this mosque and saw hatred and rage in the eyes of the terrorist who killed and martyred 50 people, wounded 42, and broke the hearts of millions around the world. Today, from the same place, I look out and see the love and compassion in the eyes of thousands of fellow New Zealanders, fellow human beings from across the globe that fill the hearts of millions more who are not with us physically but in spirit. Imam Jamal said, this terrorist sought to tear our nation apart with an evil ideology. 
that has torn the world apart. But instead, we have shown that New Zealand is unbreakable and that the world can see in us an example of love and unity. We are broken hearted, but we are not broken. Phenomenal words from this Muslim leader. We are broken hearted, but we are not broken. We are alive. We are together. We are determined to not let anyone divide us. We are determined to love one another and to support each other. This evil ideology of white supremacy did not strike us first, yet it has, it has struck us hardest. The number of people killed is not extraordinary, but the solidarity in New Zealand is extraordinary. In memory of the shohada and the victims, he said, to the families of the victims, your loved ones did not die in vain. Their blood has watered the seeds of hope. Through them, the world will see the beauty of Islam and the beauty of our unity. And then he recited, do not say of those who've been killed in the way of Allah that they are dead. They are alive, rejoicing with their Lord. And impressively, brothers and sisters, he turned to specific thanks, and I'm relating those. We are taught by our Prophet Muhammad that you can never truly show gratitude to the Almighty God without thanking your fellow man. To the people of New Zealand, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your tears, he said. Thank you for your haka. Thank you for your flowers. Thank you for your love and compassion. To our Prime Minister, he said, thank you. Thank you for your leadership. It has been a lesson for the world's leaders. Thank you for holding our families close and honoring us with a simple scarf. Thank you for your words and tears of compassion. Thank you for being one with us, he said. Thank you to the New Zealand government and to all the wonderful people who have shown us that we matter and that we are not forgotten. Thank you for your police force and frontline services. You put your life before your own every day. Thank you to the neighbors who opened their doors to save us from the killer. Thank you to those who pulled over their cars to help us. Thank you to those who brought us food and helped us when we found it difficult to stand. Thank you, thank you New Zealand, thank you for teaching the world what it means to love and care. Brothers and sisters, I recite that as coming from somebody who is not distant and giving a sermon thousands of miles away. This was a brother, this imam, who was in part of the massacre. His wife took a bullet to her hand, and he was there afraid of his life. He saw his brothers and sisters fall in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspires him to be so magnanimous. <coughs> So thankful, so respectful, so caring. That is a lesson I would like to take and want to share, brothers and sisters, that it gives us a template for responding in these difficult times. So I will end with the dua that he made at that time. Oh Allah, have mercy upon us all. Oh Allah, have mercy upon those who were massacred last week. Oh Allah, grant to them the highest level of paradise. Oh Allah, grant to the injured a speedy recovery and grant to the families of the victims patience. Oh Allah, grant our nation and country New Zealand peace, security and protect it and its people from all evils. Oh Allah, grant to the entire world peace, security and prosperity. Oh Allah, protect New Zealand. Oh Allah, protect New Zealanders and the world. That was his dua. We say ameen to that and we add brothers and sisters that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may inspire us in these difficult times to understand the role that we have to play in spreading the message of compassion and caring and love that the Prophet so exemplified. And let us remember the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his words are the truth, the supreme truth. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam amma ba'd fa ya ma'ashir al-muslimin qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayyuhi al-ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala sayyidina wa maulana muhammadin bi'adadi man sallu wa sallam 
اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد بعدد من قاعدة وقال اللهم صل على جميع أنبياء والمرسلين وعلى سعير الصحابة والتعبين وعلى إبادك الصالحين اللهم أيد الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم قوي معنا إخواننا وأخواتنا في كل مكان خصوصا في كريس جورج في فلسطين والسوريا واليمن وويغور وميانمار وإندونيسيا وماليزيا وتركيا وإيران وإيران وهند وباكستان وبنغلاديش وكشمير وفي كل أمريكا وفي كل مكان اللهم قوي إيمانهم وثبت أقدامهم وانصرهم على عدوهم اللهم أشف مردانا ومرض المسلمين وارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين اللهم اغفر لكل جميع موت المسلمين اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم وعفو عنهم وعافهم اللهم أنزل على قبورهم الدياء والنور والفسحة والسرور برحمتك عليهم يا غفار يا ودود اللهم فرج كروب المسلمين وعامل روات المسلمين واستر أورات المسلمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يعمر بالأدل والإحسان ويتعز القربة وينهان الفشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكر الله يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر أقيم الصلاة الحمد لله بحب الله جاء 